Pigs. And we fed them fruit out here. It's unusual. Flower. Hey everyone, Carl here from Zanka's Farm. And today I'll just be showing you what's happening out in the garlic patch. And just give you hopefully a few ideas on how you can grow your own garlic in a no-till, non-conventional way. So we'll just show you what it looks like and go from there. So this is looking pretty good so far. We're getting pretty close to harvest you can tell because the leaves are starting to dry off. It's usually once you still I think it's have two or three green leaves left and the other ones are dried off, that's about right for it to be harvested. And when you look at the base, you can tell as well. So it's still quite wide right at the base there. So that will need to shrink quite a bit before we know it's ready to harvest. So it should be around the same all the way down. So this variety of garlic is giant or Russian or elephant garlic or whatever you want to call it. So it's, I think it's one of the largest varieties, but it's quite mild compared to most garlic. And the main thing I wanted to talk about out here was the way we actually prepared this area to plant the garlic in. So first what we did was we ran the pigs over this whole area in order to sort of eat the grass and till it a tiny bit. but. We didn't want a lot of tillage to happen. And then afterwards, once the pigs have been taken out, then we just sort of mulched it really low to the ground so that it wouldn't have much grass competition. And then just planted the garlic straight onto the ground and covered it with a thick layer of mulch to stop the grass from growing. But since this variety of garlic is so big, it can handle that thick layer of mulch and having to come through it but the grass can't, so most of the grass just gets smothered. But the main reason we went with no-till, because we've only been on this property for a short period of time, the original owners did all the conventional style of chemicals, tillage, poor livestock management, all of that. So since we were trying to adopt the organic regenerative style of management, we um for the first couple of years we were here we did do tillage here but the form of irrigation we have on this property is mainly flood irrigation so if you till an area and then irrigate it with flood irrigation it tends to compact it and i, I don't know if this is soil type but, it, but yeah, anyway if you if we would till it and then it, we would flood irrigate it it just goes so compact and like concrete so we thought we'd do a trial I think we started doing this last season last year and it works well last year I don't think we ran the pigs over it but I think we mowed it really low so that the yeah the grass wouldn't be competition for the garlic and so we wouldn't have to weed a lot 
So I don't think we will do the pigs again running them over because they make too many holes and then it's uneven for when you're plying the garlic. So even if you just had ran the cows over it just to graze it fairly heavy and then what they don't eat you just go over it with the mower and cut it all and just plant put the garlic straight on top of it facing up or sideways and then do a really thick layer of mulch like you look here and this was even deeper like seven months ago when we planted so that's like however deep that is it's probably about seven eight inches when we first started but it's probably broken down a bit and this is just great for the soil it's good worm food so you yeah, get some good worm castings and humus there And even once you've harvested your garlic, you can plant some summer crop in there. So we did that with part of it, part of the garlic um, patch last year, is we planted some sunflowers, pumpkin, uh, watermelon, and corn and beans in. And since there's just so much mulch left, you don't really have much grass competition. And since it's so moist underneath because of how much mulch there is, we didn't really have to water it much. So you can have a succession crop after the garlic. And this is, it's a scalable system because you could just have some chickens which you run over a small area and then put the garlic on top and then do a thick layer of mulch. Or if you have one cow, you could do that. It depends how big, but it's a fairly scalable style of, or what do you call it, style? Or, yeah, sustainable, no. Uh, what was the word? scalable scalable way of growing garlic but yeah every year we never grow the garlic in the same place every year so we rotate so this paddock has different bays like different irrigation bays which are divided by a small mound in the middle of it going all the way down and so each year we do a different bay is to give the soil a rest and give it time to sort of build up nutrients and we you can either plant a cover crop or just let it go back to grass i think we have some crop planted in the original garlic patches and that will do really well because there's still quite a bit of organic matter from all the mulch which is left over which is breaking down and I think the main reason you rotate it is yeah, just to give the soil a break and so you're not just having one kind of living root no, and so you're not having one kind of plant in the same spot repetitively because then it just keeps sort of reaping those minerals out of the ground and not having other plants there to bring up different kinds of minerals if that makes sense i don't know if that made sense but anyway so you don't really want to leave it bare when you do rotate to the next spot so it's good to plant something behind it just to keep that cycle going of plant material growing bringing up nutrients and minerals and also adding organic matter to the soil when the grass dies so yeah, I just didn't, wanted to do a quick video of how we do our garlic. So this was an experiment, but it worked, luckily, considering it was a large experiment. And yeah, fairly easy crop to grow and a fairly, fairly pretty good value for money when it can, in the veggie world. Well, this is really considered a herb. Brings pretty good money. Especially when it's organic. The reason tillage is not a good thing is because it releases carbon dioxide, bears out the ground, and you you wreck your soil structure. So I think especially with this soil type, once you till it and then it gets watered, even with a heavy rain, it just goes really compact. So tillage is never really a good thing. But I heard a guy say once, I think it was Alan Savory say, bear, no, yeah. Drought doesn't cause bare ground. Bare ground causes drought. 
So you tr always should try and keep a cover over the top because most people would probably think we're crazy trying to plant garlic or anything into a spot where there's grass growing but if you get a thick enough layer of mulch you can and it works really well this is I think one of the best crops of garlic we've ever had so and with different varieties I don't know how it would go and different climates different soil types so you just got to experiment and see what works for you all right I'm gone Well, that went well.